Good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm interviewing Dr. Stephen Terrio, who's the CEO of a new company on the Toronto Venture Exchange called Cytophage. Now, Cytophage is a pioneer in health science. They're focused on building sustainable solutions for bacterial infections and diseases using tailor-made bacteriophages. Now, if you want to know what a bacteriophage is, well, watch the interview. But to give you some sort of a mental framework, a bacteriophage is a type of virus that specifically infects and destroys bacteria. It's like a natural predator for bacteria, targeting them for infection and then using the bacterial machinery to replicate itself, eventually causing the bacteria to burst and die. So cytophage is essentially using viruses to kill bacteria. Their technology offers a quick, effective and environmentally friendly alternative to antibiotics, targeting a wide range of applications in human health, animal well-being, and food safety. There are a handful of publicly traded companies in this arena, and I think it's worth keeping an eye on this story, because if this pans out, the implications could be huge. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. Steven, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for the invitation. I'm excited to be here. So let's start off at the very top here. You guys um, are a new company that just recently listed here in Canada called Cytophage. Let's start with the basics. What does the company do? Well, just to start off, we are a company that uses bacteria's natural predators, something that we call a bacteriophage, to treat infections. The largest impact that our products can actually have is help to solve problems around antibi antibiotic resistance or what we call AMR. Okay, so we, we, we hear a lot of stuff um, about antibiotics uh, socially, or let's just say uh, when you go to a place like Whole Foods, um, you might be talking with somebody who works there and they'll tell you that antibiotics uh, are a terrible thing. But really, they kind of sound like, in a sense, they're like a wonder drug. Why is it that we need alternatives to antibiotics? Yeah, you know, Steve, when, when antibiotics were first created, they were the wonder drug. In fact, science thought that we would stop infections just with antibiotics. But fast forward today with our overuse of them, the way that we use them, again, in our animal cycles, we actually use 70% an, uh, 70, 70 antibiotics in our animal feed to actually grow our food. So with all of these issues that of us overusing antibiotics, we've created a problem with bacteria being resistant to these antibiotics or to these wonder drugs. So now we need a new solution and that's where Cytophage stepped in. Okay, so let's get into that solution. Can you, uh, in, in, in very basic terms, explain to us how your solution works? Sure, sure. So bacteriophages are viruses that only infect bacteria. Again, I always like to call them nature's way of dealing with bacterial infections, or I always like to say that we like to use biological solutions for biological problems. And what we do at cytophage is we actually harness the power of these bacteriophages and we use them to create solutions or products that actually get rid of pathogenic bacteria in a many, 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 many environments. So from animal health to human health to food safety are the, are the three focuses for us. So from looking at your deck here, uh, it seems that you guys have been conducting tests and trials on animals so far. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So so animal health is sort of our main focus. The reason we're focused on animal health is because, again, if we look at the world, this is our food. This is how we actually feed populations. And in starting in hand animal health, again, antibiotics are used there very heavily. And now governments are actually moving away from antibiotics being used. So they need a different type of solution. And with that different type of solution, we actually fit in very well. And the reason we fit in very well is because we can create bacteriophages that actually will substitute the use of antibiotics in these feed cycles. And then we don't have the issue with, you know, overuse of antibiotics. Now, when we look at our actual product, the largest field for us, of course, is animal feed and all of the feed companies that have to sort of rejig their companies because they can no longer use antibiotics are looking for solutions. And again, we're getting um, we're getting a lot of emails and a lot of phone calls from a lot of companies that are actually looking to use bacteriophages because they can no longer use antibiotics. So uh, bacteriophages, this isn't something that you guys invented. This has been around for uh, yeah. many years and it's it's just part of science. Is that it, how it I'm is. understanding so it? 
Yeah, absolutely. So bacteriophages are nature's way of dealing with bacterial infection. So they've been around since bacteria have been around. In fact, since the earth, you know, was developed and we started having life on it, bacteriophages would have been one of the first life forms, actually, which is kind of interesting. And again, I, I don't know if I showed you a, a little model of it, but we can see here that we have a bacteriophage and it looks like a lunar lander. And that's exactly what they sort of look like in nature, although much smaller. So we didn't produce bacteriophages. What we do, though, is we harness the power of bacteriophages to deal with pathogenic bacteria. And again, we do that through the science that we have and the technologies that we have at Cytophage. So what can you tell me about your background, who's on your team and their background? Yeah, no, absolutely. So for myself, um, I'm, a, I'm a former government scientist. Um, I used to work in the federal government, again, dealing with um, problems with um, bacteria bacterial infections. Um, I left the government. And when I left the government, I created a company uh, called Cytophage again. And with about 15 years of experience around developing bacteriophages, I've brought on a bunch of great scientists sort of to, a, uh, to help me and to sort of help us move our technologies forward. And what we've done is we've created a very strong science team. So when we look at bacteriophages, you can take a phage from nature and you can infect a bacteria with it and it'll kill it. But then it's really hard to commercialize it and to create it so that you can actually use it in a sense where it'll deal with a lot of bacterial problems that we have around the world. So what I've done with my team is we have figured out how to actually make these commercializable. And what I mean by that is we can grow them to really high concentrations. So they give us really good abilities to, for treatment and very effective cost treatments in that sense, right? Because I'm competing with antibiotics. So when we compete, at, compete with antibiotics, we want to make sure that we can compete financially as well. So that's, again, what I've done is I've sort of surrounded myself with a team of scientists for the last 15 years, and we've developed really, really strong scientific technologies to allow bacteriophages to be commercializable. Are there any examples recently or in in the news that we may have read about where there were some sort of, say, outbreaks, uh, maybe in Canada or the U.S., where your technology could have uh, solved uh, that outbreak? No, absolutely. So, you know, there's been a lot of news coverages that have, have been occurring just recently. Um, we've had some outbreaks of, of salmonella and cantaloupe. We've had outbreaks of salmonella in dog food. We've had outbreaks of salmonella in child care facilities. So there's all types of outbreaks and these outbreaks turn into human deaths, right? So this is actually something that's that's very substantial in our population. So with all of that, um, if we were using our product currently in Canada, those cantaloupes wouldn't have had salmonella on them because we would have sprayed them before they came into our country. And, and this is just an example of some of the, the ways that we can use our technology. So we're obviously coming off of a pandemic is there just hearing about how basically we're sort of developing an immunity towards an antibiotics and the problems that that could create is is there any sort of way that this issue of if if not addressed of how we're just becoming more um immune to antibiotics could lead to some sort of a health crisis or global pandemic yeah you know already Okay, so um, already the World Health Organization is recognizing that antimicrobial resistance is going to be the leading cause of death by 2050. Uh, it, just recently, you may have seen a, a couple of news releases or I guess news uh, episodes. Um, uh, Sanji Gupta, I think is his name. Um, he he uh, did a really good episode, I believe it was CNN. Um, and with that, he was showing how we have a huge problem with AMR issues or antimicrobial resistant issues in our world. And he's actually showing that bacteriophages are actually one of the solutions that we are going to use to actually help us get through this problem. And then, you know, on top of that, I've actually given a lot of interviews as well with the CBC. I did one in earlier December where I was actually discussing what cytophage was doing in the poultry market and how we can actually use bacteriophages to increase the amount of food protein that we can actually create. Why? Because as we create and use our bacteriophages, we remove infectious bacteria. So there's no disease. So then the animals are healthy and they grow to a bigger weight. So yeah, there's lots of news coming around and lots of really good, um, exciting sort of uh, topics that are actually revolving around bacteriophage. Yep, it's an exciting time for us. How many other companies are out there that are working on bacteriophages? 
Well, you know, in my mind, there's really only five or six companies that we actually um, sort of monitor and look at. Um, these companies, though, aren't working in the same area that we are in cytophage. They're actually working in other areas, and that would be more human health, uh, maybe cystic fibrosis, you know, very focused on one disease type. What we're trying to do at Cytophage is quite different. We're using our science and our technology to actually allow us to create commercial products that are more broad. So I can do Salmonella E. coli. I can also do Clostridium. These are all bacterial infections that cause diseases in our animals. And then I can take this a step further and actually say, well, listen, I can actually do human treatments because, again, currently we're doing things within the human area as well, like treating urinary tract infections, which is a multiple of bacteria that we have to deal with with our bacteriophage cocktail. So, you know, when I look at us and the other companies, um, I see that we have similarities, but I also see that all of these companies are sort of taking their piece of the pie and we're not really overlapping all that much. So what are some of these other companies that exist and how does your valuation compare to them? Well, that's a great question. We are excited to be public, and this has been in the works for a while. I believe that being a public company is going to be fantastic exposure for what we're actually doing, as well as for the company itself. In terms of our evaluation, we did just start trading, and I feel that we're really undervalued. You know, from the financial perspective, Cytophage has all of the right ingredients for success. We have been working on groundbreaking science, extremely fascinating science at moving phages forward. We have cash on our balance sheet, and we are going to hit several big milestones this year, including revenue generation. So again, I think we have everything in place to really, you know, make, make an impact and move forward. You know, there's one company that I, I currently watch, it's called Armada. And, you know, I'm using this sort of as a milestone or a measuring stick for us. It's currently traded in the United States. They are a phage company and they only do uh, human health research um, where they have one iteration or one, they're trying to cure one disease. Um, currently, their value is almost six times that of what we are now. And from that perspective, from what I know about our science and what we're currently doing, I would say that we are tremendously undervalued. And investors who buy into us, I think, can stand to benefit significantly. How much money have you guys raised to date to get to where you are today? $23 million to date um, from very smart and passionate investors many of whom invested in cytophage in every single raise that we put out. I've, I've, I've got to ask a bit of a fun question here. Have, um, have you been getting any coaching on being CEO of a publicly traded company? And oh. uh, so, <laughs> so, so some of the pitfalls uh, to avoid that we see happen with many of these Canadian public CEOs? Coaching? Well, let me say this. I'm working nonstop with my C-suite as well as my scientists. And we are all working as an integrated team and all playing on our strengths. From that, again, we have each other's backs and we really are you know, a cohesive group that can actually get a lot of things done very quickly, which is again, wonderful. We have a great board of directors. They're an extremely great resource for me. Um, and again, they help us bring the company to the next level, all of us working together. So again, it's uh, I wouldn't say I'm being coached, but I have a fabulous team that is backing everything that we're doing and understands what we're doing. And as well, you know, they're all in it for, for the longevity, meaning that we really want to see phages, um, you know, prosper in the human population as well as in the animal po population as treatments. So last question for you. Um, over the remainder of 2024, I'm sure that the company has timelines, milestones, potential catalysts. What, what do those look like for Cytophage? That's a really good question. Uh, and I'm glad that you actually asked it. There are five key strategies that we are working. And any one of these five strategies is a company maker, um, again, and can deliver home runs for our investors. Number one, domestic animal health. You know, specifically in poultry, we just put out a press release uh, talking about our egg wash, in which we can actually improve hatch rates as well as cull rates that occur when they're actually used in, in egg processes. We have tested this in the lab and it eliminates 90 99% of the bacteria that are actually found on the eggs themselves. We can't wait to start testing this in the field because we have egg producers and poultry farmers that are pushing hard for us to develop this. Why? Because they want to get rid of uh, currently their methodologies that you're, they're using uh, because they're inefficient. And ours, of course, um, are very effective, as you can see from the laboratory results. Uh, this is the one to watch because, again, um, if it works in Canada, which it already has extremely efficient poultry sort of 
standards, it's going to be a massive win across the globe for uh, egg treatment and increasing hatch rates as well as uh, chicken producing. The second part is international animal health. So bacteriophages are getting a lot of attention in Asia, and we have people on the ground in Asia actually actively working um, with business development angles with some of the largest animal feed companies in the world. We have developed antibiotic replacements for bacteria problems in poultry, as well as bacterial problems in dairy cattle. Um, investors like to see you know, results closer to home, whether North America or Europe. But I feel that part of cytophage going to Asia is actually helping us you know, gain valuable information um, to help push our, you know, our initiatives forward with bacteriophage. So moving into, into Asia gives us a lot of opportunities that we can, of course, bring back home. And the next three, well, I won't get into too much detail, but there are three areas that we are working on and working in that help and, and uh, move bacteriophages forward. Human health, again, we currently are doing very small single patient trials. We are working with committed doctors trying to find solutions to patients who have run out of options. Like if you can't use an antibiotic and you can't get a treatment and you are going to die from your disease, we are an option for you. Why? Because we can create bacteriophages that do solve these problems. You can imagine the press of cytophage has helped to cure a life-threatening bacterial infection. Again, human health trials are extremely expensive, but if we show that we can actually cure a single person, then the avenue for us to do large-scale human trials is there. And again, with the support of the government and other um, industries, we'll be able to do that fairly quickly, as long as we show positive results. And again, um, because this is going to be revolutionary science, the other things that we're actually looking at are phage manufacturing, as well as biomarkers and standards as advancements in our science and advancements in, in products that actually can be revenue generating. Well, Stephen, thanks so much for hopping on here today. Um, hopefully you'll keep coming back on here as the story develops. I think this is one of the more interesting stories we've seen uh, on the Canadian junior markets in a couple of years. And uh, I'd, I'd, I'd love to get down to see the facility at some point. Uh, once you guys uh, have it up and running. So yep. thanks for hopping on here and uh, congratulations on the Go Public transaction. I appreciate it. Always an open invitation. Thank you again for the invite. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, please smash that like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell. Also, let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks, everyone.